this is Eddie Boulay and I hope you're having a most marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, today I'm asking the question, what would you give or what would you give up to be white? And I'm talking about Meghan Markle again because I think Meghan Markle made the worst gamble in the short term that anybody could make in their effort to assimilate. Now, in the long run, it might benefit her children in some way, but she has actually made a pact with the devil in that marriage. Those people will not give her a rest. Meghan Markle was living in the United States, getting by. She had some people say she was a white passing biracial. I think all of her friends were white. Her, her dates were white. Her husband was white. She was married before to a white man. She was living the life of a, of a white girl or a white passing girl. She was sliding by. She was sliding into white society. And if she had stayed in the United States with these, well, especially in California, in Southern California, well, there's a lot of that assimilating and into and mixing and marrying is going on. She probably would have been fine. Apparently, she calculated that being white passing would work all over the world. Now, everybody knew her mother was black, that she had black ancestry, African ancestry, but she made it in the United States for that. When she needed to use her blackness, she could, like when she was in Hollywood and they needed a black person. And these days now, because white people won't let you be white, they will not accept half white. To have a black in it, they'll just pull in a biracial. And she fits in without them actually having to hire a black person, somebody that might be difficult. So they get somebody they can blend in who understands the white way. So Megan was making it. Even in the show that she was on Suits, her father was, was black. So she was using her blackness when she needed to. But her connections were with white people. She joined a white sorority in college. Her best friend was white. Now they're dragging out some biracials and they're pretending that she was best friends and great friends with Serena Williams because that has worked for her in the climate that she's in now. But before she married into the British royal family, according to folks, she was white passing. She was passing as white. To a certain extent, I think Meghan Markle and her mother both are clueless when it comes to race in America. Because Southern California is not all of America. But she was making it work because she looks enough like them that she can slide into most spaces. But she has made a deal with the devil. I think that that whole thing about marrying into that British royal family, which is really just trailer culture people in palaces and driving around in fancy cars and buggies and waving. But those people, that's Jed Clampett in a palace. That, those people are nothing but Jed Clampett. If Jed Clampett was what you call white, T-R-A-S-H, that's what they are too. Because they have, they have no class. They have no dignity. They perform dignity. They perform class. But they don't have any class. And they don't have any dignity. These people are racist. But she gave up what she could have been for that. And as I said before, it might work for her children. I seriously doubt it's going to work for her. Because I think at the beginning, the British people were fascinated with her. They liked her. She seemed to be popular. But somewhere along the way for her, something went wrong. Now, it was always somebody in the background. There was always those people in the background who at Buckingham Palace that they call the suits, the people that are really running the show. They have a problem with her bloodline. And even though they are living off the black people, they're, living, they're still living off Africa because those people so-called gain their freedom from England back in the 1960s and 70s, back in the 19s, but they never let go of the natural and mineral resources 
of Africa. So they're in that, what they call the Commonwealth. And that's what keeps them tied to the money. Africa is taking care of them. Between Africa and the Caribbean, that's what they're living off of. That's what's keeping them propped up. So they don't want Megan, who has African ancestry, to go to Africa and be more popular than they are. That's a part of it. Because when they toured South Africa, those South African people loved her. When they went down to the islands, uh, down in that New Zealand area, those people went wild over Megan. And that was a, they feel that the British royal family is threatened by anything, anybody that comes in there that's more popular than they are, like Princess Diana. She was willingly giving up what little blackness she had to assimilate into that system that those people are in. Because she wasn't just marrying a man. She was marrying a system, an institution. And they have to accept you. Because Harry's mother was as white as they come. She was more popular. She looked better than all of them put together. And they didn't rest until they drove her out. But now this is what Harry says about Meghan. Prince Harry says, My mother, Princess Diana, was chased to death while dating someone who wasn't white. You want to talk about history repeating itself? They aren't going to stop until she's dead. Now that's what Prince Harry says about Meghan Markle. And she's talking about the British press and probably the British royal family. They're not going to stop until Meghan Markle is dead. Now, what kind of... <laughs> What kind of statement is that for him to be saying about her? And you're going to stay there? She's already talked about mental health issues that she was having at, when she was living over there with them, trying to live with them. Because the reality is there's nothing she's going to be able to do that's right. She can't do anything right. She can't open the door right. She can't say good morning right. She can't walk down the street right. She can't do anything right. Because they have found a flaw in her. She is of African descent. That royal family is a dying institution. Because if they were to pull out, if Africa would have pull out now and say, we don't want to have anything else to do with this royal family, they wouldn't be able to keep the royal family up now. Because they're already in economic crisis over there. And those people are hard to keep up. Those palaces, Buckingham Palace has almost 800 rooms. And that's just one. They have a number of palaces all over England, Scotland, and Ireland. And those things are huge. I mean, the light bill alone would be enough to say the average person trying to keep lights and water going in those places, trying to keep the roof repaired, trying to keep the carpet clean. They have a staff of it's probably 300 people to keep that just Buckingham Palace up. They are very expensive. And so they have to be the top dog. They have to be the most popular. And it's all based on whiteness. They don't have any Chinese in that family. They don't have any Indians. Uh, they, and Africans, I mean, they, you know, they call themselves big on the road. They just love the British royal family. Some, not all. But they wouldn't have even had an African girl in there, an African woman. He wouldn't have married an African woman. He might have messed around with one after dark. But he couldn't have even married an African woman. Because this is the look that could get in. But she couldn't stay in. And she gave up what she could have been for, for that. For a dying institution. Because most of those European monarchies, those royal families, have fallen. There's just a few left. And they're all on a banana peel. P depending on Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean to keep, them, to keep them going. The whole idea is that you can't marry somebody from the place where we're taking advantage of people. That's the only way I see it. But I don't even, I don't fault them. I think she and her mother, as I said, Megan and her mother are clueless. They don't understand how the world works. She had all the clues she needed before she married him that this was going to be a very rough, tumultuous ride for her. And she went through with it. They were only let one member of her family come to that wedding. And that was her mother. Megan has black family members in California that she is apparently close to. 
and and they wouldn't let any of them come. They're even particular about the white people that can come in the royal family. And see, this is all the more reason why stuff like that needs to be disbanded. Because it's nothing but a drain on people. It's nothing but a drain on the society of the other people that they're trying to rule over. But she's responsible for the situation that she's in. All of these public embarrassments that she has suffered, a black person has had to come to her rescue. Just recently, her so-called sister, her half-sister, sued her in Florida for defamation of character or some nonsense because Megan said she was raised as an only child. That helpful took Megan to court. It was a black judge, this woman right here, that threw it out. They said, you, you can't prove of what she was trying to prove. Took Megan to court for that when she and Harry didn't have anywhere to stay after they left England because the whole goal was to make sure they didn't have anywhere to stay and make it look like they were just out there floundering. Tyler Perry had to give him them somewhere to stay. And then, because Megan was so broken up about it, she wanted to tell her story. And she told it too. But Oprah Winfrey had to, to, to make that happen. And Serena Williams, it is said, Serena Williams sponsored a baby shower for her in New York when she was about to have that first baby because the, the royal family wouldn't do it. They, have, they gave her no support. And it was all because she has African ancestry. What will you give up? You're going to give up everything to assimilate into a race of people who despise you. To me, that is the definition of insanity. Because to me, her mother was the one who really didn't understand. And so Megan was raised by her mother. So I, I blame a lot of it in her mother. And her mother says she regrets that she didn't teach Megan about racism. I don't know where she thought she was living that she didn't need to tell her child about racism. All they do all day long is call her hateful and spiteful and a liar. And Kate Middleton had to slap her down. It's just all kinds of stuff. What are you giving up? You're giving up your self-respect, your dignity, your bloodline. You're giving up everything to assimilate into people who have and will never have any respect for you. Again, it might, in the future, it might mean something for her children. But right now, she's having to suffer through this. People are talking about being tired of Megan. This is April of 2023. There's only been two instances of somebody seeing Megan and these people in England now they're tired of her how do you get there and how do people become so insane that they place so much emphasis on something that doesn't really mean anything that's their culture these people are out of their minds she gave up her life really she gave up her life for something like this. And she's got children involved. Now Prince Harry's father. Is about to be crowned king. He's, he, well, he's, he became king. When his mother died. But now he's going to be coronated. He's going to be crowned. Now Meghan Markle's children. Are his grandchildren. They were not invited to the coronation. She and Harry were invited. But her children were not invited. I don't think it has an end. I don't think there's any place that this ends. I think that this goes on as long as they have a British press and as long as there is a British royal family. And when the people finally get rid of them because there's a large number of the British people that wants to get rid of that royal family, when they finally disband the royal family, they're going to blame it on Megan. What would you give to be white? What will you give up to be white? You're giving up your body and your soul. You're giving your soul for this. You can't be a decent person. You can't be a dignified person living a dignified life when people are attacking you every day for simply breathing because they don't like the fact that you spoil their image of this British prince. Race, black people, and the resources that black people have it's what's keeping them propped up. So you can't ever say, oh, what they're doing against them is wrong. Or what they're doing against black people, the way they're robbing Africa is wrong. Because if they didn't, weren't robbing Africa, 
they will have to go to the trailer park where they belong. So anyway, it just seems like Meghan Markle wasted who she could have been for what she is becoming, which is nothing but fodder for the British press, for nothing white people who have accomplished nothing in life to make money off of demeaning and degrading her because she has African ancestry. What would you give up to be white? Apparently everything. I feel sorry for her. And don't come to me talking about how much money they have and all that. That does not give you dignity. It does not give you peace. And it does not give you respect. So it doesn't matter how much money she has. I know somebody's going to write a comment that, oh, she'll be fine because she's got all this money. Money can do something, but money can't do everything. And in this case, money, she has all the money she needs. But she doesn't have what she wants. And that's assimilation into white society. And she won't get that in her lifetime. Her children might get it. But she won't. So what will you give to be white? Apparently everything. Okay y'all. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.